talk about your big game. You one, you know, rebound away from a double double, 29 points, nine rebounds. You did all that being aggressive. You only had two fouls. Talk about that. Yeah, definitely. I, I felt like my teammates did a great job of establishing me early in me when I was open in the post. And coaches were talking about we had to be big in the paint. So before the game, I just knew that I, I had to draw a lot of fouls and, and get us some bonus, get us to the line early, and get our rhythm going. So when my teammates helped, that really helped me get going. How did he prepare you all for the atmosphere of knowing that he's played here in the all working environment? Just explain it to us that we have a lot of experience on this team. I don't think he needed to do too much. It's going to be loud or it's going to be rocking or nothing like that. We have a lot of veterans on the team that we've played in games like this before. So we are poised and confident coming into the game. It was great. It was great. I mean, it's one of the better arenas that I've played in before. So it is definitely top notch and I had a lot of fun. Surprised to hear the coach get such a long standing ovation. No, not at all. I mean, right when we got off the plane, people was running to shake his hand. So, <laughs> like someone was telling me on the plane right over here, he's a legend. So, you definitely saw it with the legend. So, you were 19 of 22 from the foul line. Can you just talk about the satisfaction you take after all the work you put into that part of your game? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, it's been a big piece of my game last year and, and the year before I struggled with it. So, last spring and summer, I really made that emphasis to really work on my my foul shot, so it's just nice to see it come to fruition with, with making it like that. And I'm pleased, but it's still good. Did you have an idea you were getting a lot of guys with fouls over that three guys four fouls? Yeah, I mean, I enter every game with that mindset. If I can get my, my man two quick fouls in the first half, you've got to sit, they got to bring someone else in. It, it, it just ruins team's rotations. If I can get their bigs in foul trouble, then they got to find different ways to to scheme and do stuff like that. So that's always in my mind, is trying to get guys quick fouls. Mike, what was the toughest part about defending Kansas today? Um, you know, I thought we had a really good game plan. I think they hit some threes, which was difficult. But I wouldn't say there was any one thing that stuck out. I just think it's uh, overall the team we didn't execute as well as we needed to. <coughs> but we'll figure it out. Um, Michael, it seemed like early on when they were throwing the ball down into the paint and into the post, you all were able to, to collapse on them and keep them from kicking the ball out to the perimeter. Did you sense a point where the, they changed their, their, their ball movement and they were able to open up guys on the outside? I mean, yeah. I mean, every team adjusts. They'd be silly not to. So when we were bringing the double team, maybe they started telling guys to flash or, or to cut harder on the opposite side. But that comes down to us, too. We have to adjust as they adjust, and we got to start cutting off passes and, and close out harder, so they definitely do. What do you all take away from this game? Uh, I think that we can play at a high level. Uh, we have to do it for 40 minutes, which we didn't do today, but I think like Coach after the game, we're, we're confident in ourselves that we can, we can be a high level team and at the end of the year when we want to play our best basketball, we'll be playing at the level we need to. Any other questions? Let's do that. All right, guys, thank you. Thanks, guys. Now I'll open it over to Coach Adams. Coach, thank you for the lights. Obviously, coming through that summer, like we talked to the players, you know, being back home, so to speak, and uh, we didn't talk about it you really when we used to play. Yeah, I mean, it, certainly an emotional day. Um, my emotions right now are more, uh, you know, frustrated that we didn't perform at a higher level, but I am also very proud of the way the guys performed. But, for me personally, it's uh, you know means a lot the reception, and, uh, the relationships, the experiences I had here. Reed uh, is a monster. He's a monster. And, uh, it's fun. He's an easy guy to cheer for. I told somebody today that the Kansas fans will appreciate Reed Travis. He does everything right. He's a, he's a workhorse. He's a high character person. Uh, the way he handles his academics, the way he handles his personal life, the way he handles his day-to-day -day things let alone the basketball side of things. But I, th I really thought going into the game that the Kansas fans would really appreciate him because um, I've always said Kansas fans are very knowledgeable. And I think they probably left the game today with an understanding that he is a, he's a heck of a player. Jared, anything jump out that was maybe something you didn't expect emotionally, somebody you saw, or, or somewhere you walked in here, anything like that? Uh, I don't know that there was, was one moment. Um, you know, there was uh, there was a number of people that uh, some I've kept in touch with, some I haven't. Uh, 
but I think the overall feeling, you know, I, I, I remember clearly walking into Allen Fieldhouse when I was first recruited to Kansas and, uh, and that feeling. And I think I'll probably remember the first time to shoot around today at, at 9 a.m. when we walked into the, into the arena and just seeing, seeing what it looks like. The Fieldhouse looks phenomenal. Um, it has a little bit of different feel, to be honest with you, than when I played. But they've done a great job uh, keeping it up, making it pristine, and, uh, and the sound on the scoreboard works well too. It's pretty loud. Well, that needless to say, I feel like there was a warm reception, and, and uh, you know, the Jayhawks tend to take care of their own, and that was phenomenal. But um, I think everybody in this room and everybody in the state of Kansas understands that uh, Bill Self is. Uh, Beloved as he should be, and this is, is really doing a wonderful job with the program. So I understand that, and I love that, and uh, just to be able to get people to not to move me that first time out was was great. And uh, but the, the reception really meant a lot to me. How much has re progress been for the line like you said he worked on? How many teams have you guys did to try to get the players in the top? Well, and then, whatever the biggest word I can think of, you know, distance-wise, it's here to China. Um, but what he's done with his free throws and his shooting is unbelievable. Uh, for him to make 19 free throws last year would have taken probably 50 or 60 attempts. And so for him to be able to do that in 22 attempts speaks, I mean, speaks volumes for his character. And for somebody to change their shot in college is a very rare thing. Uh, you know, when you take my 10-year-old son, you know, I think that's something we can change his shot. I need to, by the way. But for a college kid, very, very rarely does somebody go to college and you can take their shot, break it down completely, especially during the summer when we have such limited time with them and say, here's what you need to go do, go do it. And for him to revamp it like that's pretty impressive. Jared, what do you think of Mace? Pretty good. I mean, it's uh, needless to say, they're getting a lot of accolades, and, uh, and they should be. They're phenomenal backcourt. They have a combination of shooting, uh, decision making, ball handling, quickness, toughness. As a coach, those are the things you certainly look for. I think they that right now. Are there any teams that, that you'll face in the, in the Pac 12 that are similar to, to Kansas in terms of the way that they shoot, shoot the three from outside? Or can you shoot from outside too? Yeah, I, candidly, I don't know yet. <laughs> it's my first go around, and I've spent a lot of time on, on this team and our, our next. Next, uh, next game's coming up, and so I think there are some really elite level teams in the Pac-12. Um, but in terms of what they do best and how they how they shoot it, or uh, kind of their characteristics, I, I probably can't speak clearly on that yet. What made defending the three-point shot so challenging today? Yeah, our, we had a clear goal of keeping the ball out of the paint, and uh, we were trying to do that in the first half. And the first six of the first seven threes um, were in transition and out of bounds plays. So we actually did a decent job in our half-court defense of really getting in tight, making a pitch out, and then trying to have one-directional help and be able to challenge threes from there. The bad shots and turnovers led to transitions. We got four threes out of transition, and again, a couple out of the out-of-bounds plays. But against high-level guards, you know, you can sit out there. We, there's no doubt in my mind we could take away all the three-point shots in the world, but you're not going to take away all the dribble penetration and dunks at that point. And uh, they're a good team for a reason. Played St. Mary's on Wednesday. They're a really good team for a reason because they're not one-dimensional. They have the ability to get to the paint. They have bigs that can score, and they have uh, on dump downs and post ups, and they have perimeter players that can light it up. So uh, it is difficult against good teams, but I think that's an area of growth for us potentially as well because I think we know what we want to be defensively. Uh, we're building our fundamentals and building our identity. Uh, I like what we're doing, but I think we're going to be as well. As you say, that what, what did they do to you all defensively? I mean, you all out read them. Well, I think our ability to handle pressure uh, needs to get better, and I would, I would say that for all five of our players out there. Uh, and we're going to be able to do that in a number of ways, but I think the biggest thing is, is the fundamentals of the game. I mean, it's passing and catching, it's getting in a triple threat position, it's looking to attack under control, uh, and then within our offense, too, there's been, I mean, it's a whole different deal from last year, so our guys have really done a good job buying in and trying to learn it uh, and learn everything we're doing. But I think we're in the process right now. We're kind of getting through the learning the plays and remembering where I'm supposed to go. And now we need to get into the phase of 
not only do I need to get open right there, I need to get open at the right time with the right cut and be able to rip through and make the next play. And so I think our scoring will hopefully become a little bit more efficient as time goes on as we kind of work through that process. Jerry, did you see yourself on that? I did. I think uh, Mike Lickers, who's in charge of the video stuff, is a good friend of mine, so he probably felt bad and wanted to put me in there, so I appreciate that. But, no, but Coach Self actually said before the game, and you know, it's a neat deal that it was a conscious decision for them to put me up there, and I uh, certainly appreciate it. Coach, you were a little disappointed in the second half against St. Mary's with your team's toughness. How do you feel like they held up today? I thought our intent was really good, but, um, you know, we've, we've talked about four guys of our program, and toughness is one of them. I think our guys are... They're trying to do the right thing. I think we are a tough-minded team. But I also think, kind of whatever percentage, I don't know that we're to our end destination yet. We're not to the end goal uh, yet. And I think we can grow uh, as a team. And one of the ways, one of the areas we can't grow is just the idea of being tough-minded at all times. And that's not just loose balls and charges. Uh, it's running the offense when you're fatigued. It's sprinting back on defense every time. It's talking every time. So I do think we have some room for growth there, but I like where we're at at this point. And then just finally, you have a long break now between games. What are some of the things, besides what you've already talked about, that you want to work on right now, stretch? Well, I told our team that, um, you know, we have finals right now. And that's, as you as you know, it's an important time at Stanford. We're going to give our guys plenty of time to study. They're going to do a great job academically. But these next two weeks are very important for our team. And I would I venture to say that uh, maybe the most important two weeks of our season. The last time we've had a really a focused practice on our own selves was November 3rd. And so these next two weeks um, are going to be really important for us. You know, last month we've always had either a day off or a travel day or a day before the game where we're prepping for a new team. And so I think the next two weeks are going to be very important to, for some guys to get their rest, for some guys to get our conditioning up, for everybody to get their shots up, and for everybody also uh, to really understand not only what the offense is and what the defense is, but then work on our execution through. So the next two weeks are vital for the success of this team. I think the guys understand that. It'll be great two weeks. With, uh, with you and Christian having KU ties, did you guys have any conversations about looking forward to this game? Uh, a little bit. Um, not not any in-depth conversations, but uh, Christian was a keeper here in the field house. I was in charge. I was the gym head in charge, and uh, uh, also was a you have room to grow in, in efficiency of our offense and our, our point guards need to continue to grow there. But I thought he did uh, really play a steady game. How has all this made you, you know, for your time playing here to you know, be on the coaching staff and more that you can see before you would be? How has that made you a better coach today? Well, I've been, I've been extremely fortunate to be around tremendous players and coaches and places uh, like Lawrence and the state of Kansas where I've met people. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of original ideas. Uh, I'm kind of a product of all the people and uh, ideas that I've come across. And I try to sort those. I've been very, very lucky to be around a lot of very successful, very intelligent uh, people that have given their time to me. So uh, everything I am today certainly is a, a compilation of all those those moments and people. And, and certainly my time in Kansas was a very, very important time. We have time for one more question. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.